Hello, my friends. And the Russians are advancing again. It seems that almost every my update contains updates on new Russian advances. This is very bad. Also, today Biden officially withdrew from the presidential race. This means that Trump's chances of success are now even higher. Unfortunately, many experts claim that Trump doesn't really know how to end the war in Ukraine. In any case, he will try to give part of the territory to Russia to end the conflict. So it's still a big question how events will unfold further. The Russians, of course, couldn't stay silent about Biden withdrawing from the race. Volodin already described it uh, as another victory for Russia. President of the United States of America today was a very strong party from the Поняв, что его никто не изберет, такие, как Байден, должны привлекаться к ответственности за санкции, за развязанную войну на Украине, за разрушение экономики европейских государств, за то, что США делают по отношению кубинского народа. General, the soccer's continues. Uh, now uh, let's move on to the front. Uh, we'll start with the Kharkiv direction. Here the Russians continue to fight deeply, but the situation remains unchanged for now and shelling continues at maximum quantity. And in Vovchansk, the Russians managed to advance a bit. For now, uh, the Russian advances are at a tactical level. However, as you understand, a few such tactical advances and half of the settlement could be back under their control. Therefore, the Ukrainian forces have to do everything possible to destroy the advancing Russians. In the Kupinsk direction, the Russians continue to advance uh, quite actively. Yesterday, there were reports about the capture of the village of Pishane. Thus, practically, the entire front line is getting closer to the water barrier and uh, to Kupians itself. A major battle, I think, for the city lies ahead. Uh, the Russians continue to bring in reinforcements and conduct up to 10 assaults per day. In the Svatov era, uh, the Russians also claimed yesterday to have captured Andreevka. Uh, the Ukrainian side hasn't officially confirmed this advance yet. However, uh, this is not the first time the Russians have made advances in this area in this summer. And it seems this claim is not exception. Therefore, the situation here remains tense. Across the entire direction, the Russians are conducted more than 10 assaults per day, which is quite a significant level of activity. For the south, the battles for Rekivka continue, but so far mm, there have been no changes. In the direction of Krimina, uh, the Russians continue to shell Liman and conduct attacks on Nevsky and Terny. Uh, there are also periodic clashes in the forest near Krimina, however, the front line here hasn't changed yet. Uh, in the Siversk direction, the situation is very difficult. The Russians don't stop assaulting Bilohorivka, Verkhnokaminske, Vyimka, and Perezhne. Recently, they have made significant advances here. Riding on their success, they have increased the intensity of shelling and attacks, trying to push forward as much as possible. For now, the Ukrainian forces have managed to hold the defense and the front line remains unchanged. In the Chasivyar direction, the Russians continue to advance and the Ukrainian forces report that the situation in Klesheivka is very difficult. How in Klesheivka? We are trying to evacuate wounded comrades, but the best sometimes don't let us do it. Our positions remain under control. Today, the bastards enter the gray zone got lost, and FPV operators successfully worked. Uh, on one hand, it's good that the Ukrainian forces are still holding some positions in this settlement. On the other hand, it's bad that the situation remains extremely challenging. In the Turetsk direction, the Russians are slowly advancing, 
as you can see, the situation remains extremely difficult. In the Pokrovsk direction, the Russians continue to advance as well. Overall, we can only hope that the command will be able to stabilize the situation in this direction. In the Kurakhva area, the battles for Krasnohorivka also continue, and here the Russians are managing to advance a bit further. This could lead to the Ukrainian forces having to leave the settlement and retreat, which could cause another collapse of the front. Meanwhile, the Russians continue to assault Baraskovivka and the village of Kostantinivka. In the Vuhledar direction, there is currently no significant activity, despite the recent Russian capture of two settlements and a substantial advance towards Veliko Novosilka. For now, they are building up reserves and periodically attacking Vodane. The front line remains unchanged over the past day. In the Zaporizhia direction, the Russians are not decreasing their activity. Instead, they have significantly increased the number of airstrikes. They are also advancing towards Malatokmachka, uh, near Robotine, uh, then Novoandrivka, and the village of Sherbaki. For now, the front line remains unchanged over the past day, but the situation is difficult. In the Kherson direction, uh, the situation also remains unchanged. Shelling of the right bank continues, and there are periodic assaults in the area of Kazachi Lahiri. However, Russian war correspondents claim that no attacks are being conducted and that they lack the personnel for assault operations. And that's all from me. So please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on all the latest news. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.